Hey guys, welcome to the part one of my series about dynamic campaigns in combat flight simulators. In this series, I want to take a closer look at uh, campaign systems found in some of the most popular combat flight simulators. Uh, I'll be discussing the features and capabilities of uh, uh, these uh, campaign systems and how they add an extra layer of realism and immersion uh, for our uh, simulation experience. Um, I will be comparing some of the most popular simulators like the Falcon 4, BMS, uh, uh, DCS, uh, and the Lushin 2, but I will of course make some digression on other military simulations like Command Modern Operations, known as CMO. Um, in this first video, uh, this will be just a short and quick uh, introduction to the subject. I do not intend to go deep in any topic here. Later videos will be focused on the campaign of Falcon 4, uh, how it works, how and why the bubble, the so-called bubble in Falcon 4 is what makes it a new, unique around other dynamic campaigns, how Falcon 4 also campaign is highly based uh, on the ideas of uh, a uh, United States Air Force uh, theater level uh, campaign system, the so-called Tech Thunder. And in my opinion, this last part is uh, merely speculation why that happened. Nevertheless, very interesting stuff in my opinion. Later, I plan to implement dynamic campaign engine in Commando, uh, Command Modern Operations, CMO, which will be uh, inspired in the original Falcon 4 dynamic campaign, but of course optimized, adapted for the CMO uh, environment. This is going to be done in Lua. And uh, almost the end, uh, I would like to go through the implementation of a bubble system very similar to what you have uh, in Falcon 4 in Unreal uh, using the Blueprint script language. I think this is a, a very interesting path to follow in the near future for someone trying to develop dynamic campaigns uh, using the Unreal due to the open road architecture already available uh, in Unreal 5.1, for example. And last but not least, uh, I will discuss a general problem, possible solutions, how to match aggregated and non-aggregated. Right now, we don't understand these words uh, perfectly. I will define them uh, today and uh, in the next videos that we're going to be using. But how to match aggregated and non-aggregated combat results in a dynamic campaign system. Let's talk about the, the first topic today, and which is uh, the definition of a dynamic campaign. What is it? And why the word dynamic that is very often used uh, does not necessarily mean dynamic in a, in a more general sense. Um, before we talk about dynamic part, let's talk about campaign. Campaigns, I think, is quite straightforward to understand for everyone that plays uh, uh, combat flight simulators. Series of missions chronologically connected or not, that's a campaign. The scenarios, the force, and so on can be completely different from mission to mission, but usually uh, these missions are played in a very sequential way, it's one after each other. Sometimes in these uh, campaigns, we can only advance into the next mission if we, if we fulfill some constraint, like for example, a target is destroyed, or a, we arrive at some position in the map, sometimes we can simply fly the next mission. A textbook example nowadays of a campaign like that described uh, is the script campaigns that are sold for uh, Illusion 2 as um, download content. Typically, these missions are a series of 10 to 15 missions in one historical place, fly one single aircraft and follow a story. Um, although not a combat flight simulator, Common Modern, Common Modern Operations CMO has several DLCs also with this kind of uh, uh, campaigns. Um, they are not necessarily uh, scripted, the, the missions itself, but the way that you pass from mission to mission is uh, very restricted and are uh, you can play each one after each other. Uh, although this kind of script campaigns can be very interesting and I have played many Illusion 2 as well CMO campaigns, replayability is near zero. Uh, when you have you know, flown or, or fought for 10, 15 hours one of these campaigns, you don't want to repeat it again. 
sometimes even by putting some random effects like position of units, change in AI skills, some events, random events and so on, uh, it's in my opinion quite boring to play than more one time uh, this kind of campaigns. And as the king all said, BB King, the thrill is gone after the first time. So we have then now established uh, the meaning of the word campaign. Now I would like just to talk about the use of the word dynamic. And just a quick look at the internet is going to tell us very clearly there is a lot of confusion and misuse of the word dynamic though. It ranges from simple questions on Hoggett about the uh, definition of dynamic campaign. People still do not understand what's going on. Up to uh, videos on the YouTube uh, from Green Reapers, for example, calling it the campaigns in DCS as a fully dynamic campaign. But what's the difference between a fully dynamic campaign and a dynamic campaign? This gets much uglier when you go, for example, to Steam and then you start reading the comments of people asking for a dynamic campaign and the editors write that they're going to add randomness to the to the game. And is it dynamic campaign randomness? What's randomness? What's full? What's not? I think you agree that uh, this deserves a little bit of uh, closer look on the definition and what's going on about this term dynamic in the campaign. The first and most simple kind of uh, dynamic campaign that one can get is the one with uh, connected missions in a sequence, very similar to what we have just said about the campaign, but now the final outcome of a mission will directly influence the start of the next one. I mean, no one can say that this is not dynamic, it's of course dynamic. This is, for example, the case if you lose all your flight in one mission, you may have less aircraft in your squad or next mission. The next mission is, however, already written in its general scope. Uh, very simple, but definitely dynamic. Uh, so this kind of mission with, uh, you know, performance in sequence, the previous one will, will influence the next one. I'm going to call it semi-dynamic campaign to distinguish what comes next, though. In general, what can be really called a dynamic campaign are campaigns where two things happen. The influence results or the effects of a mission, that means that what you have done in a mission will be permanent in the campaign environment, the war theater, after your mission finishes. In other words, what you have destroyed now will be uh, 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 destroyed, will remain destroyed next time you take off. Second, your next mission is completely open. Uh, no one designed it before, no one touched it, it's not saved, you are not, uh, it will not load when you start. But it will be completely generated by some algorithm based on the situation of the war after you finished the previous one. There has been several examples of combat flight sims with uh, such kind of dynamic campaigns. A class classic one from the old times was Tornado. Uh, from digital integration with its turn-based dynamic campaign. It was in this sense very similar to a Falcon 3 campaign, uh, which uh, was also not running real-time, but uh, missions would be generated from time to time based on turns. But the effect of uh, a mission would appear in the next mission, so the effects on the theater, on the environment, would be there. Uh, ground warfare was very poorly modeled, uh, although ground units would fire at each other uh, sometimes. Another flight simulator with a dynamic campaign was uh, Eurofighter 2000, in particular the 2.0 version. It was one of the first to try to simulate a full military theater, namely uh, the Scandinavia. Uh, the dynamic campaign basically focused on, on the air war and the respective logistics for this it was uh, written big there uh, but almost very very few of ground warfare movement or production was simulated production of logistics supply and so on i could go through a list of uh, many flight simulators uh, with dynamic campaign especially of those years uh, around the end of the 90s and beginning of the 2000s uh, but i think you got the, the idea what is a dynamic campaign uh, sometimes a dynamic campaign then can have one aspect more emphasized, other times other aspect, but uh, in general is what we define. These two points summing up is the influence, 
that remains on the environment and the next mission is not defined a priori, it's, uh, it's going to be defined by the algorithm. Then came Falco 4.0. After many years of development by Microsoft and Spectrum Holobyte, uh, it came out bugged as hell for those that uh, remember. But what's interesting, Falcon 4.0 had a different kind of dynamic campaign compared to all those of uh, the 90s and 2000s. Now in Falk 4.0, all aspects of war was dynamically simulated. Ground war, air war, production, distribution of supply, fuel, replacements for lost aircraft and vehicles, and so on and so on. The list is very long. But uh, Falcon 4 had uh, an additional thing that no other simulator had so far. It had dynamic campaign running real time with tons of units all around the place. If you remember Eurofighter, there were some units uh, there or here, Tornado very few, but Falcon had tons of units. You could fly to any place in the theater, you would be intercepted or attacked. There would be sand defenses and so on. That was a complete game changer in the combat flight sim genre, and this is still today. The gold standard for dynamic campaigns after more than 20 years of further development work by the BMS team and community. This has did not change. I will call the dynamic campaign of Falcon 4 BMS or just Falcon 4 a full dynamic campaign uh, because it does not only simulate a large number of vehicles, planes, ships, units in general, but also there is a strategy layer on the decision taking for each side, as well as what I call, and they're going to be calling in the next videos, a supply fuel replacement repair system. There is also an event system with triggers, which sets goals for air tasking, ground tasking, and the naval tasking managers. Okay, this was just a few words about Falcon 4. We'll cover Falcon's dynamic campaign in very much detail in the next video. It's going to be a lot of fun, I guarantee. But before we do that, uh, I would like to uh, go more one time or the last time through one aspect, the simulation of dynamic campaigns, which I think is very important to understand the campaign of Falcon, which is the level of fidelity in the simulation. Level of fidelity is a fundamental concept when you are dealing with a full dynamic campaign. I will explain why. It describes to which degree of fidelity a vehicle or an aircraft or a ship or a web, whatever, will be uh, simulated by the program. I mean here is the, the fidelity, how the equations described in flight are numerically calculated, how the radar is simulated, or even how the combat between vehicles are implemented. Level fidelity, or even better, the ability to change the level of fidelity during the simulation is what allows Falcon 4 to uh, simulate a full dynamic campaign. At the present form, DCS and Illusion 2 cannot change the level of fidelity. Both simulate all airplanes, weapons and sensors with a high fidelity and this uh, does not allow them to implement a fully dynamic uh, campaign. Let's discuss an example. Imagine a combat between two aircraft. Let's say a PVR engagement uh, between F-16 and MiG-29 like the one you're seeing now. This combat requires uh, the the modeling of a series of systems in real time in order to make it happen in a combat, combat flight simulator. Uh, the list is very long, but let's name some. For example, the flight dynamics, how the aircraft is flying, uh, the movement, and so on. Uh, artificial intelligence to control the aircraft, run a BVR timeline correctly, use the weapons properly. Dozens of avionics like the radar with its modes and submodes, the RWR, target pods, also the visual detection uh, by the AI, uh, including seen through the clouds and so on. Modeling of infrared radar signature, engine, fuel system, weather and clouds. Okay, I could go on for hours here. But you get here the idea that uh, to do all that, we need the precise and a very CPU intensive modeling of each one of the systems in order to simulate a air-to-air -air combat and eventually the queue of the aircraft. And the same, of course, is true for every kind of engagement, combat involving different planes, helicopters, weapons, ships, and so on. 
by now you should be asking yourself how the heck can we simulate hundreds if not thousands of such engagements which are present in a food dynamic campaign in a PC at our homes the, the simple answer is we simply can't we cannot do that we cannot do thousands of that if you have player red with uh, Illusion 2 or DCS when you try to make you know missions with a lot of planes and stuff uh, around uh, it goes really really slow and your frames per second decrease a lot that's why you need to decrease the level of fidelity of the simulation make it more coarse in order to make a food and aim campaign possible how it's done very easy you simplify how all that series of systems that we just mentioned work you make it uh, very simple you can even use just a pre-calculated probability of things happening for example just a number which will tell how likely it is that something may happen let's take the BVR combat again as an example let's imagine that we want to simplify the combat part of the MiG-29 um, with the F-16 so instead of running a full CPU intensive simulation with all systems described before we said that the F-16 has a probability of a key of 0 0.5 okay 50 percent that is going to kill when engaged in big 29 BVR combat the calculation of such an engagement requires of course you can imagine much less processing than the full fidelity simulation instead of running our radars our detection RWR AI you just keep track oh F-16 detected MiG-29 you roll the, the dice 0 0.5 chance it kills MiG-29 okay this is a very simple mod I'm suggesting here but you can make it more detailed for example we could give uh, some basic strength for the F-16 as well as for the MiG-29 um, we could compare these two strengths this could be dependent on the pilot skill flying the uh, the AI flying the airplane also on the speed and altitude the energy difference the rage separation uh, how far away they are the which PVR weapons we could give the same numbers or similar numbers for how the weapons um, operate if one side has an AWACS and so on this is for sure a very rough model still but illustrates I guess what uh, the level of fidelity means you got the idea isn't it so well but by using the simplified model now we can run thousands of engagement without slowing down our home PC just to give an idea from the Falcon 4.0 uh, the original in the original one um, I did some tests running and the original campaign just run like between 10 around 10 percent of the CPU time was for the uh, campaign part the other 90 90 percent most of the time it was running the uh, the high fidelity systems the visual system and so on and so on so imagine you have now one f16 you're sitting into it which uses 90 percent of the cpu and the other 10 percent is used to simulate all other weapons aircraft ships and in the whole scenario in the whole korea peninsula which is the theater of falcon 4.0 the control of the fidelity is just one point um, it, it is necessary to run a food and campaign but it's not uh, the only one there is more one point more one step small step that you need to do to have it in order to 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 have a food dynamic simulation this is achieved by not simply simulating the combat of individual vehicles planes ships and so on with low fidelity but by simulating the combat of larger units by using further approximations similar to those we just talked about so instead of just make it coarse simulations of the single vehicles and so on we use a word which is we aggregate these units in larger units for example instead of simulating the several BVR engagements of uh, four sheep individual uh, F-16 uh, versus four MiG-29s now the combat is going to be between flights a flight of four versus four we aggregate together so a flight of 16s now has a given strength and a flight of uh, MiG-29s will have a different strength and they're going to combat people know that the people that used to play board games 
know how uh, that works. Uh, you have units which have numbers which define their how strong they are in defense or attack and so on. For air units, a flight could be used instead of airplanes. For ground units, a company, battalion, brigade, or even division, unit size can be used depending on the fidelity desired. For, na for naval units, depending on the fidelity desired, individual ships can be simulated or task forces, as it is in Falk 4 0. Finally, I should mention more one thing since you need that to understand dynamic in Falcon 4 BMS in the next video. This process of putting together the strengths and performance of vehicles, planes into larger units, as I said, is called aggregation. Aggregated combat strengths and detection capabilities are very complicated to calculate to make it proper, perhaps impossible to calculate with precision. They are normally obtained by simulating, by simulating separate a large number of high-resolution simulations, very CPU intensive and slow, and then average over several initial conditions and parameters. Okay, this this aspect, this last aspect, has been a very important research field in military affairs. How to aggregate correctly the outcome of combat individual vehicles into large units, and this is a, a central thing in Falcon 4 how to do it properly. Now that we have understood the concept of uh, level of fidelity and aggregation. I'd like to finish this introduction uh, on this series by saying a few words about the name con con uh, campaign in the contest of DCS and BMS. As you know, DCS does not have a full dynamic campaign so far. And the reason for that we can easily understand now. It is mainly due to the lack of any algorithm to simulate aggregated combat between larger echelon units like battalions, companies, and so on. DCS right now simulates with high fidelity only vehicles, planes, etc. And this makes the simulation of large number of vehicles, planes, etc. in real time, uh, which are required for a full dynamic campaign, simply impossible. You cannot do that. The dynamic campaigns like the Liberation campaign is not a full dynamic campaign. It's a dynamic campaign because it still does not, is still not able to aggregate the vehicles in larger units and simulate that as one single echelon with one single uh, strength aggregated. Contrasting to that is Falcon 4. Falcon 4, since its begin, has implemented in its code exactly this ability to jump between low fidelity, so battalions and uh, flights and so on, and go to high fidelity, I mean no aggregations. So this, this, this high fidelity, low fidelity and aggregation in two units is what makes the campaign of Falcon 4 uh, still nowadays uh, very special. For all vehicles, planes, ships interacting with the player via any kind of sensor, weapons and range and many other parameters, Falcon 4 simulates in detail with high resolution, non aggregated. Uh, this is what takes most of the CPU time nowadays. For other units not interact with the player, that means they are very far away, let's say over China or over Japan or whatever, the decrease of level of fidelity together with aggregation in larger units is used to keep the simulation performance very high in, your, in, in, in our home PC uh, viable. The most impressive in dynamic campaign of Falcon 4 BMS, uh, the, the latest version is 4.37, is it is almost perfect transition between the aggregated and the deaggregated war. How Falcon 4 BMS has achieved almost 25 years ago that is a very fascinating topic, in my opinion, and quite interesting to shine some light right now in 2023. Recently, at the end of 2022, I read a newsletter from uh, Ed about DCS dynamic campaigns engine, and I was really surprised how similar is their campaign concept uh, to the Falcon 4 campaign, the region one. They wrote, to increase the number of units in the campaign without overtest the CPU, only units that are visible to the player or that see the player, eyesight and sensor range base, are fully calculated. For the remaining units, lighter algorithms are used which are based on pre-calculated sets. This is exactly what I meant by 
decrease the level of fidelity they are exactly trying to decrease the level of fidelity for the units which the, uh, the player is not interacting with they write more it's good to note that when preparing such data i guess the data for with the pre-calculated data for the uh, uh, aggregated light algorithms separate mechanisms are used in these uh, um, uh, add dynamic campaign engine to easily process our upcoming equipment and weapons which will be added to DCS. Exactly. This is exactly the point that we discussed about combat performance being aggregated in one number and how to do it properly. I mean, um, I am looking forward to the DCS campaign. I'm very curious about that. It's going to use the same method as in Falcon and whether they are going to really keep the vehicles with low fidelity or are going to really aggregate the vehicles in units and try to do that in my opinion there is no way around you need to aggregate in in units like battalions uh, flights and tasks you cannot do vehicle vehicles only but let's see what the future brings well that was pretty much for today well see you in the next video about the dynamic campaign of falcon 4